Hi, my name is Eduardo Hernandez. I am the author and inventor of the theory Emerging Chemical Evolution, uh, also the book by the same name. This video is about what are the possible applications of my theory um, for industry and science in general. Uh, for industry, I hope that my theory will give them more insights into how the proteins did actually uh, evolve. They weren't through spurts and jumps as they think evolution has done because they have not been able to properly uh, follow the actual evolution of all the organisms on earth based on the assumption that there was a last common cellular ancestor, LUCA, which according to my theory that it is not true. The, the last common ancestor of all life forms is of course a molecule, the viroid, that, that gave rise to RNA replication so, therefore, each cellular species would be its own lineage, which would be unrelated to uh, other cells of the same type, not necessarily of the same type, but of similar characteristics, but depending on how their genetic information is translated and stored would be more indicative of the cellular lineage of those organisms. There was no point at which a eukaryotic cell evolved from a non-eukaryotic cell. Uh, of course it did. But what I'm seeing, modern non-eukaryotic cells don't have anything to do with modern uh, eukaryotic cells. The cellular translation, the cellular uh, replication of the DNA is so vastly different that, that it's not feasible for uh, any organism to change its method of creating enzymes, sorry, no, creating um, mitochondria, no, wrong again. Um, there's no way that one organism would be able to change the way it makes chromosomes to store its DNA in one system and then evolve eventually to change that system completely and evolve into another organ type of organism that has a different type of chromosome uh, assemblage. Um, my, my theory solves that problem because it then takes back the, the point of, of divergence all the way back to the first molecule that started replication. That being the case, when that is the case, different systems of replication of RNA could, could evolve. And once that system of replication was installed, which is universal to all organisms, the creation and translation of RNA into proteins is virtually identical with all living organisms. The thing that is different and unique among all these different organisms is their method of storing their DNA, uh, how they encapsulate and create chromosomes, 
There's different systems of chromosomes with different types of proteins to hold them together, different types of mechanisms to translate those uh, chromosomes and open them up to translate their DNA to RNA. They're all different types of systems. Now, by evolutionary principles, when an organism changes its DNA, a gene, so drastically that it makes it uh, it makes it un uh, at a disadvantage because it breaks down some system in the organism to not make it able to continue to survive that that animal or that species may become extinct because of that change so i can't see i mean that occurs in evolution when it's one or two or just a handful of the uh, of genes changing that make that animal unfit for its environment and therefore dies. Now, what would I can picture enough genes changing in a few generations to completely change the chromosomal system of the cells of an organism to change that much into the system of supposedly related cells. My theory being that it occurred much earlier than before cells evolved is a more, uh, is a more uh, tenable solution to that problem. And that I believe is, is one of the benefits of my theory that will help in being able to trace the proper evolution of all these enzymes and therefore allow us to better design enzymes that will be more beneficial to human beings to be used in pharmaceuticals and treatment of individuals and plus being able to better uh, graph the, the tree of evolution because it's gonna be drastically different um, because it's gonna come to a single point, that point being the molecule of a viroid that is the universal LUVA, the universal viral ancestor of all organisms and therefore the the modern tree that we have is going to be completely rearranged um, as for another uh, application i think for my theory is that it's been known for a very long time that viroid dna is found well, viral, viroid sequences are found in the telomeres of, of chromosomes for various organisms. I, I believe that the viroid sequence, which is the beginning of life, has something to do with aging in the sense that the telomeres are needed to maintain healthy uh, cells and the aging of the cells is correlated with the reduction of telomeres at the end of chromosomes. So I think there's a, a, a very good relationship between the ability of, of viroid starting life and being still present in our genetic information that that might aid us in discovering what causes aging and maybe even reverse it. Uh, at least that's my hope.
Uh, that's going to be my next project is to combat aging. So I f I'm very confident and very clear with the evidence in my book that I did solve uh, the origin of life. So um, curing aging is going to be my next uh, major project. And um, hopefully you'll join me for that too. I'll be documenting any um, ideas I have on that subject and um, sharing it with you on this channel. And hopefully uh, I'll have a breakthrough in that and who knows, maybe I'll bring a new era to humankind. Thank you. See you next video.